As a side note, a very fresh way of looking at the benefits and risks of trade is the Iowa car crop hypothesis. Generally, there are two ways for the U.S. to produce automobiles. They can either build them in Detroit or they can grow them in Iowa. Growing them in Iowa makes use of a special technology that turns wheat into Toyotas. Simply put wheat onto the ships and send them out into the Pacific Ocean. The ships come back a short while later with Toyotas on them. This technology is used to turn wheat into Toyotas out in the Pacific. It's called Japan. This is known as David Friedman's Iowa car crop model. The moral of the story is that the effects of free trade are almost indistinguishable from the effects of a major revolution in technology. The benefits of free trade, cheaper, better, and more varied goods, can be brought about by technology as well. Similarly, like free trade, technology can destroy jobs. Containerization costs millions of stevedores and longshoremen around the world, 2.4 million in the US, their livelihoods. Yet somehow, we protest at WTO summits when a new free trade agreement is brokered, but not at Apple stores when a new iPhone model is pushed out. We just don't seem to want to make the connection. As we said before, fundamentally, trade represents a voluntary and economic transaction between two consenting parties and is indistinguishable from the transactions we make daily, domestically, at work and at the shops. If trade is happening, it must be that both parties to this transaction derive some sort of mutual benefit. To stop a voluntary exchange will be to deny a clear Pareto improvement where it can be made, and is therefore undesirable. If you can make the world better off without making anybody worse off, why should you not?